NCAA basketball totals for Saturday, February 11th. This is the segment where we look at total set by odds makers. We try to beat the line either going over or under the total. Also, we have our NBA segment out there as well. That's going to be a video, but we have been doing that live quite a bit, and that will continue uh, Sunday through Thursday, 4 o'clock Eastern. So you got to tune into that. Uh, it's been a really fun segment to do. Winning-wise, not so great in the NBA. Small winning uh, percentage, but uh, NCAA has been pretty profitable. We're hitting almost 55%. So uh, we're going to try and continue doing that today. Don't forget as well, sbrpicks.com, Sportsbook Review, YouTube channel, Facebook page. Uh, it's all there for you, all the numbers and the odds and sign-up bonuses at the Sportsbook. So you got to check out Sportsbook Review. Let's jump into some totals. we got three games on the card today. Some really, really good matchups uh, in NCAA hoops today. And the first we're going to look at here, pardon me, is uh, Miami and Louisville. All the all of these today for me are simply numbers play where numbers <laughs> numbers plays where it just uh, it looks a little bit off. These numbers don't seem quite right uh, compared to what we've seen as the trend this year as being a lot of high totals, especially with the short shot clock and uh, a lot of games have been really getting up and down. So I'm going to go under on my three games today, and I think I'm uh, I, I think. Uh, I'm on the right track with these as far as way oddsmakers have set it up. We're just going to have to see how it rolls, but uh, pretty good plays here, I think. And, uh, again, we're going to go under on all three of these. First one we got is Miami and Louisville, 132.5, and, and that's a pretty low total. But let's go and let's break this one down. Again, we're going under on this. So since Louisville's been in the ACC, these teams have met five times, and the last time they matched up was a 135 total set by odds makers and they went over that total that was last year and uh, a time before that we had a 128 and a half a 131 so the, the way i'm looking at this one is we're we got two good defensive teams now the last time they met 135 they went over but now odds makers have set a little bit lower total and i think that's right when we, we start to look at these two teams here very very good defensive teams especially louisville it's just 132 and a half i just do not see them making it now if this game was at miami where Miami might be able to put up some more points, uh, I would lean maybe towards the over. But in Louisville, this is going to be really tough for the Hurricanes to score. A really underrated team, by the way, Miami. And they're underrated defensively. Let me tell you what I mean here. First, let's talk about Louisville defensively. Uh, they're out, they're allowing opponents to 62.7 points per game. That ranks 12th in the country. Miami, they're allowing to 64.2. That ranks 26. These are two really good defenses. But so, uh, you know, just look at the defensive scoring that 132 and a half starts to make some sense. But when we look at the offenses here, you got Miami averaging 72.7 points per game, Louisville 77.5. That's some good, you know, that's going at a pretty good clip right there. So then the number doesn't start to really make so much sense. So, you know, especially with the shot clock. So this 132 and a half actually looks a little bit low. And that's the reason why I'm going to go ahead and back under the total, meaning I'm, I'm kind of backing the odds makers on this one. Some more really important defensive statistics here. Miami shoots really well from distance at about 37%, but Louisville's been great defending from beyond the arc, allowing opponents just 28.5% from distance. That ranks third in the country. Miami, defensively, their statistics are great across the board. Louisville, not, you know, despite their scoring, they push, it, it, they do it because they push some tempo. But Rick Pitino's squad, you know, their efficiency ratings are not that great. And uh, they're shooting just over 45% from the floor. That ranks outside the top 100 teams. Miami, they're right around ranking about 100th in the country, shooting about 46%. So at the end of the day, you know, uh, Miami doesn't go quite as quickly as Louisville. Louisville does like to press a little bit uh, as well. I just don't see them getting over that 132 and a half. It's a low total. But I think there's a reason why it's so low. So, again, I'm going to back under that total. Next one up. Again, going under on all these. Villanova and Xavier. Really interesting line here. 141 and a half set by odds makers. Let's go ahead and let's start. Let's break this one down. Sorry, I just uh, clicked on a backspace there. So, we got Xavier and Villanova now. Excuse me. In the Big East. This is going to be a great matchup. Uh, since 2014, you know, this is one of the lower totals we've seen between these two. Uh, the last three times Osmakers have set the totals uh, for these teams, 145, 145 and a half, 143, all above this 141 and a half. And what gives me a little bit of pause also is the fact that they went over in two of those matchups. So this actually, it seems like Osmakers should have set this line a little bit higher, but they didn't. And the reason they didn't, because both these teams can really play some defense, very good defensive teams. 
Villanova's been fantastic. They're allowing opponents just 63 points per game. They're ranked 17th in the country. Xavier, not quite as good, allowing 70, but they are at home. And if they have any plans on pulling off uh, a pretty decent upset here, they're going to have to really step it up on the defensive end. And I think they have the ability to do that. This is a really athletic team uh, that Xavier has. And statistically, across the board, they're not bad. They're allowing opponents to shoot just 32.6% from distance. Excuse me. That's pretty solid right now. That ranks about the top 50 of the country. Villanova, statistically, across the board, a really good team. Uh, They rank, uh, like, in the top 50 in opponent shooting efficiency and opponent effective field goal percentage. And again, you know, you're talking about two teams right now, very similar to that Louisville Miami game where they average quite a few points. Villanova 77.5 points per game, uh, Xavier 76.7, but defensively they're both solid. But unlike the Louisville Miami uh, game where Louisville actually likes to push some tempo, these two teams don't. Not a, not a lot at least as far as when we compare it to the rest of the country. Villanova's averaging just 54.5 attempts from the floor. They're ranked outside the top 300 teams, but they're so efficient. Um, You know, I mean, right now they're shooting 49.3% overall. That ranks 10th in the country, but they are on the road. And uh, I like for Xavier to get enough stops to go ahead and stay under this 141.5. This is going to be a really, really good matchup here. Uh, Xavier, they like to push tempo a little bit more than Villanova. But again, they're facing a Villanova team that can really step things up on the defensive end. So again, I'm going to back uh, over, uh, excuse me, under the 141 and a half. Last one up. This one really surprised me here. Oklahoma and Iowa State. Ozbegers have it at 146, and I'm going under. This is my biggest numbers play of the day because um, Iowa State goes really fast, and and so does uh, Oklahoma. They have at least under Long Kruger. They've really pushed some tempo. Two underrated defensive teams here, and this is a serious numbers play from here, for me. This is probably my favorite play of the day because when we look at the last several times they've matched up, check out these numbers set by odds makers. 151.5, 159, 169, 163, 149, 152, 149.5. We keep going back and back and back, and it's not until we get uh, to their first matchup in 2013 where we find a total lower than what we've seen. But the dynamics, of course, are completely different, completely you know different head coaches and all that. Um, you know, all those, uh, you know, different personnel and things of that nature. The reason why it's at 146, though, is because these two teams can actually play some defense, especially Oklahoma. Right now, Long Kruger, he's doing a nice job with this squad uh, statistically. Now, they're allowing a bit too many points, but this also gives me pause as to why this total is so low. I, I, how it's not over 150 is really shocking to me. Um, I, maybe there's an injury out there I'm unaware of, although I did check the injury reports. Oklahoma's averaging 74 points per game. Iowa State's averaging 80.3. So right there, that gives you, I mean, you're talking about two pretty good scoring teams. Oklahoma, a good team from uh, from the perimeter. They can really shoot the three. Iowa State, they're allowing 70.6 points per game. Oklahoma's allowing 74.9. Again, their scoring defense is not that great, but I digress. Back to what I wanted to talk about. Oklahoma, statistically, they've been really solid. I mean, they're allowing opponents just 42.5% overall shooting. And uh, 46.4% on opponents' two-point shooting. Their efficiency ratings defensively and effective field goal percentage is solid. Um, It's going to be difficult for them on the road here against an Iowa State team that really likes to push tempo. 65.6 attempts per game. They rank 6th in the country. And they rank 11th in the country in 30 field goals made per game. Um, Oklahoma usually... Under Long Kruger, no problem getting up and down the floor. I mean, they're averaging 60.7 attempts per game. So although Oklahoma has some decent statistics, this is really a reverse line play for me. I mean, Iowa State, their defensive statistics are very similar to Oklahoma, where they're not bad, but they're not fantastic either. So this is really a numbers play for me, where I'm going to go ahead and back under this 146, because it just doesn't make a lot of sense. So there's something... uh, missing quite a bit with this game and now you know since i'm in the middle of this let me double check that injury report to make sure we're not missing anything on this one we'll just treat this like a live segment a little bit uh give you just one second to pull that up but as far as i know there's really nothing of too much concern for iowa state and oklahoma where this this line should be so low so if you just give me one extra second here to go ahead and pull this up um iowa state and there's nobody out especially and uh, again, for Oklahoma, I want to double check this. I'll just do it live right now. There's, I have nobody out. So this 146 just doesn't make sense. That's it. So, you know, we're hitting 55% of, uh, 
this season. So we have a nice profit margin for NCAA hoops. And part of that reason is because when we see a line like this, we're just going to go ahead and back the odds makers. And that's been more successful than not. Um, obviously, as you can tell by my winning percentage. So let's go ahead and take a shot with that one. Now they might get over, you know, because they should, <laughs> they really should. When we look at the offensive statistics, so that's a line play. And I think it's a good strategy to go ahead and implement in this matchup. All right, let's break that down one last time. We got Miami Louisville. Under the 132 and a half, Villanova Xavier under the 141 and a half, and Oklahoma Iowa State under the 146. Those are our NCAA totals picks today uh, for Saturday, February 11th. Don't forget our uh, NBA video, NBA live segment next week, sbrpicks.com. And I wish you luck on your picks today. Go to sbrodds.com. Browse, compare, and shop live odds available at top online sports. 